I've lived in a house of COVID for six weeks now. Now I know what you're saying. Rob, there's no way that you could have a house that's COVID filled for six weeks. It's supposed to die out in 14 days. Unless maybe, oh my God, maybe there was a person who got it and then after two weeks, another person got it. And then after two weeks, another person got it. Well, that's not the case of what happened here in Thailand, in the Khon Pathom where I'm staying in a five-story house with nine people, 10 if you count a cat. Well, here we are. Fourth floor, mom's packed up. She's moved back down to the third floor with her family. And I have access to the green screen, which I'm not really gonna be using much today, but I am gonna sit in front of because you guys are really tired of looking at the Thailand yellow walls, right? So I wanted to explain because the tyranny of fear ended, at least for now, it ended 24 hours ago. And the story is just there and I want to tell you what it's like to live with a Thai family when they are in the deepest fears of this pandemic and what it was like for each of them and how I felt about it. The housing development that I'm living in right now is five stories. A typical five story type of uh, concrete structure where first floor is a garage, second floor is living, living accommodations for one family, uh, third and fourth floor, this is the fourth floor that I'm on, are living, this one is just one room, right behind me is one room and the rest of the open area I just showed you. Uh, and then the fifth floor is for the cat. On the second floor is a family of three. And on the third floor is a family of five. And I'm here on the fourth floor and like I said, the cat's on the fifth. Now the ages of the people here is mom is in her 60s, the next oldest would be me in my mid 50s, then most everybody else is uh, late 30s, early 40s, and there's one 18 year old that lives, uh, his father is the one who got sick with the flu. So he got sick, he came home from work, he went to his room, he slept all night, and he went to the hospital the next day. They took and gave him a COVID test, which came up negative, and they sent him home with medications. And they told him to return in eight days. He stayed sick, he stayed in the room, he didn't venture out except going to the shared toilet uh, on the third floor. I have to share it with the family of the third floor. The second floor, they have their own uh, toilet. But other than the toilet, he was not in contact pretty much with anybody except his wife. She, while this whole time he was sick, stayed in the same room with him, beside him, slept in the same bed with him, and was with him. So as instructed, the man went back to the hospital better. He felt better, his symptoms were done, he, he felt like he was ready to go back to work, but he went to the uh, appointment that had been scheduled, and they took a second COVID test for him at that point. He returned home, and two days later, the phone call came in that he had tested positive for COVID. Now, the first two weeks have passed. He's gotten COVID. He's been sick at the house. He has gotten better after COVID. Two weeks have passed and no one in the house knew that it was COVID. On the day of this phone call, they come to pick him up to take him to quarantine. And everyone in this house, minus three, minus the cat, the 18 year old and me lost it. You may remember the video that I made talking about how much that they had started to freak out. And on that day, mom isolated herself up here on the, the fourth floor by herself, away from anyone knowing that she would be the most at risk should she catch it. The man's wife went into full-blown panic mode. I mean, panic. Um, scared to touch everything, scared to go anywhere, scared to go into the bathroom. I mean, full-blown panic mode. Everyone's wearing masks, because this man was sitting in the house the whole time and no one knew, and now we know, and oh, everyone, just, they just, all of the people downstairs below me, 
freaked out. Now, not only was he put into a quarantine environment, but we were told within the home, as you would expect, for everyone to stay within the home. We possibly could have caught it, so stay indoors, which I was told, don't go out, don't go to 7-Eleven, and I had a real hard time being told not to do anything, but I did because everything was brought to me. Uh, food was brought to me, water was brought to me, coffee was brought to me, beers were brought to me. So fine, I have Netflix, I'll watch Netflix, and I, I was fine. For two weeks, I stayed on the fourth floor, mom stayed on the fourth floor, the rest of the family stayed in different areas and would not interact with each other at all. The only interaction these people did amongst themselves were messenger, on uh, telephones they of course they would yell at each other from floor to floor or across a room but there was no no close contact whatsoever i understand i'm just saying the 18 year old he just kind of skipped town i mean he, he didn't come back to the house for the longest time so then after two weeks you think okay everyone's gonna be fine right because the, the man's went into quarantine and the family's been in quarantine. It's been 14 days, everyone should be fine, right? No, no, that's not the way it works because then when he comes home from the quarantine, everyone in the house thinks he could have brought it with him, including his job where he and his wife and the third da uh, daughter downstairs, they all work at the same factory over here. So nobody's going to work now because the work doesn't want any of their employees to come in that have been in this house. So everyone's out of work, no one's talking to each other. The man comes home, he goes into his room, his wife won't even stay in the room with him. She's sleeping outside in, in the mom's old bed. Mom is sleeping on the floor up here on, on the makeshift bed that she's created. And I'm in my room watching Netflix and just, wow. That, that brings us up to four weeks. So he's home and everyone's still in quarantine. Everyone is still flipped. Now, the one thing that did change was, well technically now I can go to 7-Eleven if I want to, but I don't want to cause any waves with the neighbors because everyone in the whole neighborhood knows that this is the house of COVID. And if they see me walking down the street, they're just gonna think, uh, here's the guy that just doesn't care about anyone's safety. Even though I'd be wearing a mask and I wouldn't go into anyone's shop, I don't want to reflect on the family. Fa I wouldn't want any of that to reflect on the family that live here. It's, it's just saving face for the family. It's better for me to stay inside. So just two days ago, I think I finally went to 7-Eleven and bought a couple of beers. So I have been personally in my quarantine for four weeks, four weeks that I was up here, three and a half right there, somewhere at it, where I didn't go anywhere. And then I finally went to a 7-Eleven and bought some milk and some beer. I think that's what I did, and ice cream. But last night was the 14 day number that the man had come home from the 14 days of quarantine previous to the 14 days he was sick actually with COVID in his room downstairs. So six weeks. Now I'll tell you what I thought was really, really cool uh, to some degree. At the, st at the stroke of seven o'clock last night, everyone like a light switch just went back to normal. Mom packed up and moved back downstairs and the, the woman that was that's married to the man that had been nervous and, and fearful out of her mind for four, six weeks, I mean, well, four weeks. She wasn't worried while he was sick for the two weeks. But the four weeks after that, she had been so worried, she just stopped. She looked at me when I walked downstairs and she goes, no COVID. And I said, I know, I've been telling you, no COVID, not to worry for so long. Cause she had worried so much and I tried my best to comfort her to, to no avail. But like the light switch went on last night and everyone in the house went right back to normal. I mean, just boom, right back to normal. Um, so I, I can't express through a camera how fearful the people in this home actually were just from knowing the word, the name, 
of someone in their home having COVID and possibly there was a chance that they could get it and just ultimate fear. I think the mom was the best at not fearing it as much because we were on the same floor and every night or every day that I would see her, she would sit in the corner with or without her mask depending on how scared she was that day. And I would do a, you know, nod heads up and she would laugh and I'd say, no COVID and she'd say, ooh, you know, she was, she's playing it safe and I'm glad she did. But it's been a long six weeks and it's not done. I mean, I don't know when I'll be able to get back to Phuket because now I can't even drive there if you wanted to drive there. But that's my story. I'm breaking a sweat, it's so hot. Uh, yeah, up here on the fourth floor, but six weeks. One person got COVID, it takes six weeks to get through it over here if you're living with the family of it. And that's how it went. Guys, I hope you're safe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support that you've done. If you really like this channel, consider being a member or a Patreon. That is the 100% support to keep this channel alive. I thank you in advance and I thank all of you that are Patreons and members and all of you that have been. I know it's been a long time for me in six years in Thailand and I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been there to support the channel and keep it alive for six years and for six years more, I hope. And thank you. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Love you guys. And now I think I'll go see if the cat's still alive. I don't know where he's at.